callbacks are hard. You ever heard that? Anyone ever said callbacks are hard? Streams used to leak events. This was one of the first major bugs in Connect. If you had a middleware that like a an authentication middleware that went out to a database and checked your cookie and saw if you were a user, you couldn't call next synchronously. You had to call next after some I.O. And if that was like a file upload, you just lost all that data. You never saw that file. Your server just hangs. There's no error, nothing. And it took TJ and I a couple of days to figure out what in the world is making the servers hang. And that's the problem. It never was fixed. There's just really, really hacky workarounds. And not until node 10 was it fixed. And then node added new streams. The routes were actually pretty hard to compose. You need this big connect middleware. You shouldn't need a library to do that. They're just functions. WebSocket requests don't are not requests. You get request events for all requests except for WebSocket requests. They have a special separate WebSocket event type. So if you have middleware for connect that does authentication, it won't see the WebSocket request. And there was a talk yesterday about ways to combine those. But to me, this, this is an issue. They should, they're all requests. They should all go through the same route. Error handling because of the asynchronous nature in the callbacks is hard. If you don't catch an exception, and they're hard to catch because the stack is always resetting, your entire server crashes, which would make them unstable. So Node is awesome, but these are the pain points. So here's how I would like to change that things. But change is hard. Node is used in production at a lot of companies. If you change an API, lots of people scream. It's, it's not pretty. You have to choose between doing what you think the best API is and getting out of the way and letting people create products. I mean, which is more important? So change is very, very hard. And language changes, especially in JavaScript, are hard for the same reason. If, if Brendan Eich said, I wanted to go add this feature to JavaScript, or worse, I want to remove this feature because I think it's bad, how many websites depend on that feature would suddenly break? Do not break the web. Do not do it. So I went to Lua. And this was about a year and a half ago. I found this language called Lua. It's a scripting language. Who's heard of Lua? Wow. Who's used it? Impressive. So it's like a minimal version of JavaScript with coroutines built in and very different syntax. But it has functions. It has closures. I mean, it's, it's similar. And it's very lightweight, which I like. And what I did is I ported Node to Lua. So this actually runs on my Lua port. This is the hello world in Node, but in Lua. Works great. Here's HTTP client, same syntax as Node. And then using the coroutines, you can do fake blocking because you can suspend your coroutine, wait for the callback to call, and then resume your coroutine. And so I can A wait on the callback and get my data synchronously without blocking the event loop. It's not threaded, it's coroutines, and that's built into the language. So this was one of the things I explored. I couldn't do this in JavaScript. JavaScript will have generators someday, but they're not there. So that project was called Love It. It's a combination of LibUV, Lua, and Jet. And then it's got a pretty logo. So yeah, back to, back, back to JavaScript. So what, what I wish Node had done. Back in 2010, in the spring, Node had these things called promises. They were called promises. I don't really know what they were. They were like event emitters with a done event and an error event or something like that. And they even had coroutines. If you called dot wait on a promise, it would suspend your thread, let other events happen, and resume you when it was done, which was no end of bugs. And then Ryan said, let's take promises out of Node and have callbacks. And there was this big debate about what style of callbacks we should use. And the kind that I was promoting, we called continuables. Instead of having the callback as the last argument, you return a function that takes the callback. And that way the callback's not mixed with your arguments. So here is how you would read a file. You'd fs.readfile, that would give you a continuable, then you would give the continuable your callback. And of course you can just inline this and you have two parentheses instead of a comma. So minimally it looks like callbacks. The difference is, you don't have to do all this argument surgery. What if there's an optional argu argument at the end that is a function? And what if the callback is optional because maybe it's fire and forget? How do you know if that third argument is a callback or this function type? You have no idea. 
And when you're writing control flow libraries, I wrote step, and I think async is the popular one these days. You have to do all sorts of argument surgery to inject this callback and take out this callback, and it's just a lot of messy code. And since you're returning a value, you can do neat things with that, like the fake blocking. So this thing that returns, I call the continuation. All it is is a function that takes a callback. That is the definition of a continuation. It's basically an ultra, ultra lightweight promise. There's no object, object, there's no dot then, there's no white papers written about it. It's just a function that takes a callback. And it has about half of the benefits that promises claim over callbacks. So I made them very simple on purpose. And then I added fibers because someone wrote a C++ add-on to Node.js that gives you coroutines, which remember, this was evil t three years ago, right? It's probably still evil now, but it's fun. So, so I can implement this await that I had in Lua, and I can do it in Node. The, the one big danger of coroutines is if any function you call is able to suspend, you, suspend your, your current thread, and you share state, then your state can get changed. Now this happens with callbacks too. Any callback you call, while you're waiting on that callback to happen, your state can change. But it's very obvious because there's this big word function and these parentheses and these braces. You can't miss it. It's like, it's like 15 characters. So what I did is I have a little convention. Any function that might suspend you, put a dollar in the front. jQuery people are going to hate me. But there, there's only so many special characters in JavaScript. So dollar wait, what it does is you give it a continuation and it suspends your thread, and when the continuation resolves, it returns the value. And if there was an error parameter, it throws the error. So you get synchronous return and throws on anything that uses continuations. So here's an example. So I create a fiber using node fibers. I load the, the wait function, and I want to open this file, and I just return. There's the file descriptor. And I create a raid stream, and this buffer function what it does is it takes a stream and just keeps consuming the stream until it has all the data and it gives you an array of all the items. So this is, this is almost like, like functional reactive programming. But again, that takes I.O., so you have, to, you have to wait on the continual the buffer returns. Yeah, yeah, I mentioned this about the state changes, how things can change out from under you. So that's the one change I would make to Node. I wish Node had used continuables instead of callbacks, but it didn't. So it doesn't matter. But you can easily wrap these on nodes callbacks. Like I was doing, what slide was it? Yeah, this one. So fs.read file there is nodes built in read file. And I'm just wrapping it to be a continuable with my read file. So it's, 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 you can use any existing node library with callbacks. And they work fine. So then, that's not, that's not radical enough. Let's change streams. That's a hot topic, right? I don't, I don't like node streams. I think they're complicated. I like simple things. Here's my definition of a stream. A readable stream is an object with a read method. That's it. And that read method returns a continuable with a value. A writable stream is any stream with a write method. You give it the data, and it returns a continuable of when the person you wrote to is ready for more data. That way you don't write too fast and, and fill up the buffers. And for end, when read gives you undefined, that's the end of the stream. When you write undefined, that's the, you're signifying the end of the stream. So you get back pressure, you get end, you get streams, you get 99% of what you need from node streams in this tiny API. It's very nice, especially when you include fibers. So with fibers, reading a file is just a while loop. While I'm reading from the readable stream, get the chunk, log the chunk. I can use try catch, I can use while, I can use all these constructs built into the language because I'm synchronous again, even though I'm not blocking the event loop. It's a very different mindset. It's something I'm exploring. I explored it in Lua and it was fun, so I'm going to try it in JavaScript. So why use, this, why use this dollar wait thing everywhere? Why not just make dollar versions of all the functions? So I put dollar read on the streams. So I can just fs.dollar open and readable.dollar read. And that's clean code, right? That almost looks like synchronous blocking code, except for the dollars, which is important. 
And then here's the buffer function without using fibers. The one I talked about that takes all the stream data and gives you back an array of, an array of the parts. So I've got my, my read function and my onread callback, and they recursively call each other. And I have to have all this sync state because the continuables might return synchronously, and, and there's no tail recursion in JavaScript, so you don't want to just keep recursively calling you blow the stack. That is nasty code. I don't want to write this in my program. That's how you do it using fibers. You just while loop, read, push it on the array, return the array, done. How about piping two streams together? This is very, very similar code. I've got my read, my on read, and then calls write, and then I have on write, and then I recursively start over again, and I keep looping. Or do while, read the chunk, write the chunk. And since end is undefined, the while will exit when the stream is done. Here's copying a file using, using streams in that pipe helper. This looks very familiar to the other, other node code. Here's how you do it with fibers. You create the stream and you, the dollar pipe just blocks until it's done piping and then it, and it unblocks. But only blocks your coroutine, it does not block the process, it does not block the thread. You are still single threaded, you still have an event loop. So that's what I would change to the callbacks and the streams. Now what about the HTTP interface? Oh, before we go there, let me show you guys something. Let's break this up, because I love live demos. So I really enjoyed the talks yesterday about functional reactive programming. Is that what it's called? Yeah, where you, you take streams and you transform them and get new streams. I like that. And with my, stream, with my simple streams, it works really well. So I made this tiny um, interface for a transformer and, or filter. Or I guess map. Map is the term. So it's a function that takes an emit function. Nah, I can't type at this. Returns a function that takes the input and does something. And that's the interface. If you implement this interface, you now have a stream transformer. You do one for encode, one for decode, if they're duplex streams. And you can go between any protocol to another protocol. And I implemented several examples. I've got one that takes TCP packets and converts them to WebSocket data and back. The one I'm going to show you takes joystick events from the kernel and turns them into JSON objects of the joystick events. So here's the joystick library. This is the entire thing. This byte 8 is another byte size library. I have another file. And what that does is it takes your stream of data. The chunks can be any size, especially if you're coming over the network. TCP chunks can be Theoretically, one byte to 50K. But in reality, they're a little more uniform, but still they change a lot. And reading these joystick events, I wanted exactly eight bytes at a time. So instead of baking all that eight byte logic into my joystick decoder, I just make a general byte size decoder that always gives me eight bytes. And I just wrap that right here. So, I, you, so this, this interface I designed is wrappable. And so I know now that this chunk will always be eight bytes in a node buffer. And if it's the end of stream, I just forward it through. Otherwise, I take, because it's, it's an eight byte struct is what it is. So the first four bytes are a timestamp. The next two are the value. The last one is this bit field. And this only decodes because it's only a readable stream. So that is the codec for my joystick. And over here on the left, this is my program that uses the codec. So I open dev input JS0, I create a readable stream, I stream map, which takes the stream and my map and, and returns a new stream, and then I just loop over that stream. And that stream's just going to emit joystick events. There's, there's not a lot of code hidden. I can show you the byte size and the stream map. They're also about 20 lines each. So let me run this. So those are the, all the initial values. So it's got the init true flag, and then as I move the joystick around, so these are these are axes, these are buttons, type button, and these are just events. And what I did last night is I took these events in the AR drone library and just said, well, if button equals this and value equals this, make the drone flip left. And you just 
glue buttons to events, and you can tie things together very, very easily. And it's just, it's streams. I'm taking a file from the Linux file system, converting it into joystick events, and I'm taking those and tying them into AR drone things, and you just, you just script your logic, because that's what JavaScript is good for. So back to HTTP. So I, I, I explained earlier how I don't like that the streams get in the way, and what I really don't like is how it's coupled to a server. I don't like how the web sockets are coupled to the server with a special event. HTTP is just a protocol. You don't have to have TCP under it. You can HTTP on a socket. You can HTTP over a fake thing and do unit testing. It doesn't have to be a real socket. So I think a web app should just be a function. I think everything should be a function in JavaScript. So no TCP, no none of that. Here is a basic app in my new interface. If you return a string, the server will send that string to the browser or, or whatever is consuming. That's the simple case. The simple case should be simple. If you want to set some custom headers, you return an object. And code is a special property for the status code. Body is a special property for the body. But everything else is interpreted as an HTTP header. So this one object is your response. If you want to stream the body, just return a stream as your body. So you can send the headers and then later send the body little bits at a time. If you are not using fibers and you can't return synchronously, then you can return a continuable. And it will wait until your continuable resolves and then it will send the headers. So instead of the connect style where you have request, response, and next, this is just a function. You don't need a framework, you don't need a library, it's just a function with this very simple interface and you have an extremely composable and simple HTTP framework. If you want to write a middleware, like maybe a logging middleware, then you, you take app, which is just that function we just saw, and you return a new app, which is the same interface, request and then return something. Since app may or may not use continuables, I'm going to call this normalized thing that, that resolves continuables. If they return a string, gives you the full object. That way you always know you have an object with all the fields. It just makes the middleware easier. And then I can log the request URL, the request method, what the response code was, and just forward the response. And so this simple middleware would then log all the requests as they come through. To do a logger in connect, you have to like take the right head method and store it somewhere and replace it with a new right head method and do some stuff and then put the other right head method back and oh wait, they didn't use right head. There's, a, there's another HTTP interface now in Node and so you, you now have exceptions and your server crashes. So you wrote 20 lines of careful code and it doesn't even work, whereas this will work all the time. And yeah, if you don't want to use fibers, then you have to wrap the continual with a continuable, which is a couple nested callbacks, but it's still doable. This is, this is definitely heavily optimized towards the fiber case, but I always make it possible to not use fibers if you don't want to. So to use this, I would make an app and then I would call log with my app, and that would give me a new app. And the app is just a function. Again, there's no server involved. There's no TCP. To make a TCP server, I would have a different library that does that. I create my server, bind it to a port. And when that gives me a connection, you have this socket object. And what is that? That's a stream. It's the duplex stream. This actually hides some of the logic. I'm going to break it out a little more, where you can just give any arbitrary stream to the web handler, and it will then forward that to your web function. So anything that implements my simple stream interface can now be a server. And yeah, that's what I have. The current status is the continuable's done, the fibers someone else wrote. The HTTP library is still in progress. I was going to finish it, but I was driving flying drones instead last night. And you can see all this code on these slides under Moonslice node on my GitHub, if you want to see any more of this. Am I out of time, or do I have time for more demo? OK, because I wasn't watching the clock. All right, so let me show you more code. That's not it.
The one thing that I haven't quite figured out yet is how to model HTTP. I'm still trying to think this out. I'm thinking that an HTTP server is a stream of request events, but they're not quite the same as a data stream. So if you guys have any ideas on that, come talk to me later. I'd love to get this library finished. But once it's, once it's connected, I'm just going to treat the, uh, the TCP stream as a stream and transport it into an HTTP stream where you get request events. And when you write to it, you write responses, and that sends out the data for the response. So if you want to implement pipelining or keep alive, you can do that. The library won't get in your way. Or you can use a framework that does all this for you, and you have a higher abstraction. I, I, I very often build the low-level parts separately so they can be used separately, and then if somebody wants the high-level abstraction, give them that as well as a separate option, because different people need different things. Um, I was going to show you the WebSocket library. I wrote this yesterday. Did you know the WebSocket protocol is not magic? I know you were told it was magic yesterday. It's not magic. In fact, let me show you the entire protocol. First, there is a byte. First bit is fiend, next bit is that, so you got four bits. Then you got this other um, few bytes, I think that's one byte, or half of it, that's half the byte. So you got four bits and half a byte. That's, that's how the first one's packed. And then the next one has one bit for, what is it, something and then the length. And if the length is a certain size, there's like an extra two bytes for length or an extra eight bytes for length. And let's see, we're almost done. Oh, and there might be a key because one direction you have to mask it for some crazy security reason. It's basically just a four byte random number that you XOR over the data. And yeah, that's WebSockets. That's the whole protocol. That's it. Thank you.